For those of you who don't know, my name is Michelle the Bookworm, and it's been a minute, but I wanted to come join you guys at the end of May, the beginning of June, to kind of let you know how I've been doing in my readings. So last month I was very productive. I met my three book goal marker which is fantastic. Um, in, I read mainly modern books. So the first, well, I suppose the first one I re read is kind of like early modern. Um, the first book I read was 1984 by George Orwell. So, for those of you who don't know, 1984 was written in 1949, about the year 1984. So, essentially, this author had a lot of concern and a lot of, um, uh, a lot of concern about how the world was progressing in terms of technology and, like, people kind of not thinking for themselves and just listening to what the media is telling them and like people essentially controlling you by controlling your thoughts. Um, so this author foreshadowed what it would be like if um, people would continue down this path and really it's just that it's a society um, controlled by media through the guise of war. It is one that I think a lot of people find extremely profound. I know it was one of the books on my 100 essential books to read in your lifetime um, list. So that is one that I was able to check off. And I definitely want to talk more about it. There's a lot to unwrap in that, unwrap in that book. So I will not give it a rating yet. Book. I think I want to do a critique uh, on 1984 because um, it's one of those books that really will stay with you for quite a long time. The second book that I read in the month of May I listened to as an audiobook on Audible and that book was um, The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. It was the monthly book for my Goodreads book club that I'm a part of, and The 10,000 Doors of January centers around this girl named January Scholar who lives with this wealthy collector named Mr. Locke. Um, she, she's prized because she's very, um, she's a mixed child, and that's not something that was, um, necessarily seen at the time but she no one really knew what kind of ethnicity she had she was very like in between child and you find out later on why she didn't really have a, a place she's very out of place in the in her world and you find out why later on so her father goes around the world uh, looking for valuable artifacts to add to Mr. Locke's collection. Um, however, one day, January finds this mysterious book called The Ten Thousand Doors, and it was left behind by a woman, uh, by an author named Adelaide Larson, who talks about different worlds and different doors and where these doors lead, and January starts becoming obsessed with these doors because she's figuring, okay, this is like, this is what, you know, her father's been up to. Um, finding this book basically takes January down this path that disrupts and displaces her daily life and brings her into a, in, in her, in a world uh, where the doors actually lead to other worlds. Um, however, there is this secret society that is trying to close all of the doors um, and there's something that they are also trying to keep hidden. This book was fantastic. I would highly recommend it. There's so much to this book 
it's about like adventure and wanting to go through any means to find your, your true passion or, or follow your heart's desire. So I ended up giving this book a 5 out of 5. I loved it. It was a wonderful, wonderful story. I really enjoyed I listened to it on Audible. So the Audible version had some really fantastic voice acting. Um, the story was phenomenal. I honestly couldn't find anything wrong with it. So I would highly, highly recommend The 10,000 Doors of January. And the third book that I read in the month of May, I just finished the other day, actually. Um, and this is another book that... Uh, I want to do a review on because it had such a profound impact on me. And that is What Dreams May Come by Richard Matheson. So a lot of you probably remember um, the the movie that came out with our dearly beloved uh, Robin Williams. What Dreams May Come uh, centers around this man named Chris Nielsen. Chris Nielsen is a father, he's also a husband, and he dies in a tragic car accident. This book essentially walks Chris through what happens when somebody dies, and it gives a really fantastic explanation of step-by-step, -step, like the process of dying and like what your body goes through and and like the different stages that your soul has to go through for grief, um, you know, the consequences of, of staying in the mortal realm after you've passed on. And he, his uncle or his cousin is, is walking him through like this process and showing him what happens when he dies and is explaining everything to him. Um, and I absolutely loved this story because it really um, encompasses a lot of a lot of different beliefs into it. And honestly, one thing that um, I think a lot of people have been um, questioning about the afterlife is, you know, there can't just be one afterlife because everyone has their own um, religion and their own beliefs and you can't have everything that encompasses it all. Um, this book does a fantastic job of piecing together and like weaving together and validating all of these different religions beliefs about the afterlife and I think that that is something that is absolutely phenomenal and it's something that um, you know, it, it's obvious that Richard Matheson took a lot of time into this, and it, it's a wonderful, wonderful read. It, it is a fictional book, obviously, but it's one of those fictional books that, like, kind of makes sense. Um, and there's definitely some, uh, there's a dramatic part to it where, um, uh, towards the end, where Richard... Um, has to go to try to save his wife. So I absolutely, I love this book. It had me kind of like on edge. Um, and I want to do a more in-depth review with this one. I, this book is one of those books that like I, it impacted me in such a way that I really want to talk more about like my emotions and like my thoughts that I had while listening to this book. So I, I will talk a little bit more about that at another point in time. So I'm going to tell you my rating of it um, in a separate video. So those are the books that I read in the month of May and I have quite the TBR for the month of June. So, of course, you know what we're going to be doing. One aspiration that I have for this year is I want to read the entire Harry Potter series in one year. It's something that I've been really wanting to do. I don't think, I think I've only read the seventh book once. Maybe twice? 
think once. Um, so I want to finish reading the entire Harry Potter series this year. Originally, I told myself I'm learning to read one book every month, so I would get done by uh, the end of this month. That is not something that's going to be happening, but that's okay. Um, I am super close to finishing this wonderful illustrated copy of The Goblet of Fire. I believe I am like 76% done. I'm on chapter 30, so I've got um, like this much left to go. Not very much at all, and honestly, I am I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's wonderful. I love the illustrations. I literally can't wait for the fifth one because I really want to finish the series um, this year, and I know that the fifth the illustrated version of the fifth one is not going to come out this year, or it will come out later this year. It's actually going to come out later this year, I believe. But this book is, I absolutely, I'll say it again, I love Jim's, K illustra Jim's K's illustrations. It is, it brings so much life to the story. And I was kind of curious about how um, they were going to do some of the more scary parts. And, like, how they are going to, you know, do that. And how they are going to make it, like, serious, but also still, like, a kid's book. And they do a pretty good job. I mean, look at that. That's, like, a really cool, creepy-looking snake. So, they are doing a fantastic job um, working together to create something that's honestly a piece of art. I mean, the illustrations and the, the illustrations and the text like weave together so seamlessly that it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful read. Um, so I'm going to finish this. I am 76% done with it. And then after this one, I'm going to read the Order of the Phoenix, which is one of my favorite ones. Um, so that book, actually I bought the hard copy because I don't think I own a hard copy of it. The third book that I hope to finish in the month of June is The All Souls Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. This book is um, a series, as you know, I'm trying to really hard to finish some of my series for this year. I also... Uh, this is book series is on my 100 essential books to read in your lifetime uh, poster. So I want to finish the series to check off that box. Um, I am 40% of the way done with it. I'm not going to restart it. I think I'm enjoying it a little bit more. The first one I wasn't a huge fan of, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's so hard to get through the second one. The second one, honestly, I am enjoying more. Hopefully, I can get this done this month. The fourth book that I would like to read this month, um, it's going to be a toss-up depending on if I can find my other book. So I am currently in the process of reading a series called Covered Wagon Women. It's for a, a book that I'm currently writing, and I am 31% of the way done with the first one, essentially letters and diaries from um, the Western Trails. The one before this one was from like 1849, this one's from 1850, so it shouldn't be too bad. The fifth book that I'm going to be reading for this month is for my Goodreads book club, and that's going to be The Midnight Library by Matt Hang. So, The Midnight Library, it's really funny, and this is another book where it's kind of like about life and death. Um, so, essentially, this is um, a book about a library that exists between life and death and the shelves like go on forever and in that library 
you have like a chance to look at a book that um, lets you see how things could have been if you had made other choices. Um, this is something that I think is like really intriguing. I'm really enjoying this um, kind of liminal space of like what happens after death and um, I'm not sure if exactly how healthy it is to think like about stuff like this like oh could I have done it better um, I'm not sure how healthy that necessarily is but I think that it could be a really interesting um, fantastical read it could be interesting to think about an opportunity where you could go back and make different choices. I'm not sure if that's something that I'd really want to get hung up on, though. The sixth book that I would like to read for the month of June um, is a book that I is on my 100 essential books to read in your lifetime poster. So I'm actually, I think I have three of those on this uh, this month, so I'm pretty excited about that. So it's called Le Petit Prince, um, which translates to The Little Prince. It is a book that is on, is on my poster, but I want something that's a little bit more challenging. Um, I am planning on reading that book on my Kindle in French, just to kind of brush up on my uh, reading skills a little bit. I don't really know what it's about, I know it's a children's book, and I know it's not very long, so it's, it should be something that I think that I can pretty, I can get through. Um, there's 27 chapters, but the chapters aren't super long, so I'm thinking that if I do a chapter a day, then I'll be able to get through it, um, and I'll let you know how it is. And the last and final book on my list is... Uh, also on my 100 essential books to read in your lifetime and it's another audiobook it's a portrait of an artist as a young man by James Joyce so I'm about 58% finished with this book and this is kind of um, one of those books about um, a young boy coming of age type story um, except that he's in a, an extremely religious school and he's kind of trying to figure out like what's right, what's wrong, um, questioning a lot of things. Of course people aren't happy that he's questioning a lot of things and right now he's um, coming to terms with like how can I like be forgiven for some of the, the things that I find out that I've done wrong when I find out that they're wrong. So it's really interesting. Um, I, it's interesting. We'll see how it goes. Um, honestly, I'm not super into those kind of books where it's like a religious awakening or something, anything like that. So we'll see um, how I like it at the end. Anyway, that is all that I have for this month. I've got mustache right here and yeah so this is quite a chonky stack some of it I don't have yet a lot of it's on my kindle or on my audiobooks but yeah um I am looking forward to the month of June and I'm looking forward to um posting more videos and more reviews for you guys just to kind of keep in touch and keep it real anyways um my end of the video question, as always, is what are your reading goals for this month? What are you planning on reading? Did you read anything cool last month? Let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, uh, I will let you go. Read on, bookworms. Bye!